So our next speaker is Kim Morales Johnson, who holds a number of distinguished positions representing the Gabrielino Otongva San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians. She and her family have been active in Native American politics and culture and have been featured in documentaries and several books. She serves as vice president of the Gabrielino Otongva Springs Foundation. I live in Santa Monica, so I'm sure you understand why people would, our people would wanna live there. Our tribal elder, Angie Dora Mae Behrens and her family have been fortunate enough to live and remain in Santa Monica for generations. She has shared with me on many occasions that her father did not want to leave the area because they had always been there. A tribal council there at the Springs, not mainly of natives, but individuals that they wanted to make it look Indianish, wow. native. So they wanted to establish this is um, in the 90s? This is in the 90s. And I got the pictures there, so I can show you. And, and, uh... Okay, without, I, I almost want to ask for names, but that's okay. I, I don't know. No, he'll name, yeah. name them. Angie Dormy, right uh, Robert Dormy. Oh, Dormy's. Cindy Alvitri. Oh, uh, those Jesus. people. So now we're getting those, into that. Yeah, those individuals. Okay, okay yeah. got it. So, they came out of the woodworks, you know. So, the Dormy's, the uh, Alvitri, they came in. Yeah. And, and started claiming, and then, and that's what, I just, just really quickly, James, I want to know, okay. uh, Talk about how you realized that you weren't who you thought you were after growing up thinking, you know, one thing that, of your identity. And really well, we always knew who we were, but what happened was these two individuals, Robert Dorme and Angie Dorme, who were coming to the meetings, yeah. learning the history, never claimed they were native. They would just come to the meetings and they were learning, getting the history, right? And what they do, they're professional con artists. Yeah. So they started learning the families, right, right, the right, different right. families. And for, I don't know the actual reason they latched on to our family, but I think part of the reason was we have a big history. And so my name is James Aguirre. My mother's name, maiden name is Henninger. And we descend from the Henninger Flats. His name was William Henninger. So he got the homestead up there. It's named after him. Oh, Mount Wilson. Yeah. Right. Mount Wilson, yeah. He was married to a full-blooded Indian named Teresa. Last name Serrano, right? She was born in Baja, California. Not San Gabriel area. Yeah. She was not Garbaleno. Okay. Robert and Angie Dormy would come to my grandmother's house where my mom was born. And they would, talking to my grandmother, not knowing who they were, she was, they were asking for information about our family. They told oh, her wow. that they were related to us. They said they were, they descend from the sister of our great, great grandmother, Louisa Henninger. They claim they come from Susanna, right? Okay, the full-blooded Indian, Teresa, is from Baja, California, correct? That's the bloodline. You can't change that. Right. So if we descend from Teresa, then they also descend from her. Yeah. So how can they be Garbaleno and us Di Bueno? <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. Yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. So I actually brought a document. Yeah. This, this is uh, has Robert's name on it. Robert Dormy, his phone number, oh, his yeah. signature. Oh, great. These are the pictures that he borrowed from my grandma. She was born in Baja, California. There's no way you could be Garbaleno if you're born in Baja. So out there in that area, they call them the Kumia. So they're on both sides of the border, Alta California. Lower California, Baja, that's where she was from. So on the judgment rolls, her daughter Luisa, she stated that her mother was a San Diego Mission Indian, Digueño, which is correct. And that's what she put on the applications. When the Doramis met with Paul Rippins, they told him that she was Garbaleno. And that's what he put in this book. Without even, with no facts whatsoever. So. And remember page. the names Digueño and Garbaleno and Bernardino. These are Those Spanish, are Spanish names. names. From that the they gave the Indian because of the missions. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, San Gabriel Mission Indian, they would call you Garbaleno in Spanish. Right. San Diego Mission Indian, Tigueño. Right. San Fernando Mission Indian, Fernandino. So that's all the Spanish names. So those were our slave names from the missions. Sure, sure. Right. Because we were baptized at the mission. And we still the utilize Catholics. them today because sure. they're historical. Yeah, right? you have to. Yeah. Have to yeah. So that's why we're we're actually Catholic through the missions. So why did the dorm dormies? Uh, even why did they attempt to do this? I don't understand what, what were they getting out of it? Okay, mostly for uh, compensation. Robert monitors. He makes money with the, with yeah, human, yeah, yeah, with human sure. remains. He's been doing this since what? But early how, 1990s? How, would, how would how would confusing your history yeah. uh, benefit him in that? Because well, the, the, what he does is with that history. He utilizes that history and he puts himself on a oh, Native American contact list really? with the state of California. As a Garbaleno. So when there's development, developers 
have sure. to go through a process sure. and they contact the Native American Heritage Commission. They say, hey, I got a project over here. Do you know of any tribes or any information that we might be near burials or what have sure. you? And they give you a list and they say, here, use that list, call those individuals on that list. Everybody wants the LA Basin because there's so much work here. Yeah. There's it's going there's development. Right. You can't, you know, up in San Diego there is development, but it's yeah. it's just a certain area until you come into the border of right, right. TJ or Tijuana, yeah. you know, what have you. This is we're large here. Remember, our ancestral village, the Gabrileno, it it's from Dana Point, and we cover the Channel Islands, San Clemente, San Nicolas, Catalina, and we share the small island of Santa Barbara with the Chumash people, Northern Tribe. We go up to the area of Topanga, Malibu Creek. Yeah, yeah. Then we go back into the Santa uh, Monica Mountains, right. up by Magic Mountain sure. in that area, or Santa Susana Mountains, back that area to the high desert where already sure. your uh, right wood, silver, you know, right yeah. wood, that area. We're going to put a map up, up yeah. there. We go up into that area, and then we go down east, the lower lands, into Yucaipa, in the lower lands. All the upper lands belong to the Serrano, Cahuilla, and those individuals. So, Dormy. Or tried to just got got that information from your grandmother, great grandmother. Yes. Just to have this guy, this write this book to give him cred in. Well, they they just with this book, it gave him legitimacy yeah, claiming to be Gabrielano. Yeah, right, right. And remember, oh, they claiming Gabri Gabrielano. Gabrielano. Yeah, oh, they said it was his. Uh, well, oh, remember sister, that's right. He monitors as a Gabrielano, so oh. he they live in this area. That's right. That's so if they claim to be Di Bueno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, no yeah, monitoring. Yeah. There's no link to this oh, history here. Oh, yeah. So you can't. So if they were to claim to be Di Bueno, there's nothing for him here. Right. Right. He can't, be a, he can't be a monitor. Yeah. Yes. Right. So that, all that work, all that construction, yeah. just goes out there. He's yeah. he's made. How much do you think he's made? Oh, over millions. The millions. Millions. Wow. Tell him what he when you called him one day to confront him. What did yeah, you I him? I did call him on the phone once. Right. I got his phone I'm number. I'm calling him as well. And this is how I got his phone number. When he borrowed pictures from my grandmother, it's he wrote his day. name, signed it, the dates on here. I have to blur that out, bro. And. Uh, he also put down the pictures that he borrowed. Yeah. Right. And uh, his phone number's on here. So I called him, not knowing who I was. He did know once I told him. He started trying to tell me my own history. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Your your grandmother lives on the corner of Angelino and Lafayette. Oh, really? Breaking news. Right. <laughs> then I'd say with within less than half a minute, the first thing he told me. This is a direct quote. There's a lot of money out there to be made. Oh wow! He and I, yeah, see, and that, that that's his goal. And that brings money. all that back to the springs, yeah, where yeah. they were trying to establish a tribal council, right, a tribe. Right, right. They're at the springs, yeah, yeah, not yeah, Indians. Yeah, yeah. All no, these tribes, yeah, they were yeah. trying to establish it because to get on that list, yeah, you yeah, must yeah. be a representative of a tribal entity. Wow! So that's the dormies. Let's talk about Alvitre real quick here. So oh, can, I, can I add one thing? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay. Now here's the book written by Paul Rippins. Sure. Right, and I don't like to promote this book. It is it's in every public library. You right? should tell the publisher what's up with that. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is what, page nine, the life of William Henninger. Right. It's just a few pages. This guy Paul Rippins worked at Henninger Flats. Right. He I told you he was the chief of the forestry. Yeah. There was another guy before him named Grant Brown. Right. Grant Brown wrote an article prior, prior to to Paul Rippins. Right. 1983. The book, 1999. So this is 16 years before the book. This report by Grant Brown, true, is word for word what Paul Rippins. All he did was copy this article into his book. He didn't even write it. And what he did on Grant Brown's article, he put the you know the true statement. Teresa was from Baja California. He got it from the baptism certificate. Grant did. Yeah. Grant yeah. Brown. Paul Rippins, when he copied the article word for word, took out the Baja. And put Gabrielino Tongva Indian. So I'm um, with no proof, no. He took their word for it, I guess. So that's that's a. And he claims to be a historian. When you copy, when you copy uh, plagiarized, 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 and yeah. then he committed a bit of yeah. fraud. And oh, it is fraud. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, have you reported it to the publishing company or anybody like it? And he also misspelled the name. Yeah, that's another on thing. On, on the cover of the book, it's spelled with one N. Oh yeah, yeah. He did on purpose. N. Okay. Oh he, man. He justifies it by saying through family documents. No. Angie and Robert. Now that cuts him off. From yeah, my, I mean, <laughs> we have never, <laughs> Damn it. we have never found any documents where it's spelled with one N. Only on a census, you know, where they spelled things yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were we, very smart, but yet yeah. dumb, because we're the living descendants. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, Where they messed up, they used the family that has documents of everything, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty stupid. But I think they never, 
they never uh, imagined that we would ever come out no, no, they, and, and do interviews like this and talk, talk about the truth. So, so that, that's scandalous. But I think someone even one of the, one of that group, the Springs group, the one in the Springs group, El Vitre. Yes, I think she's even more scandalous, isn't she? Because right. not only she didn't try to fake her way in, but she's also faculty at Cal State Long Beach. That's correct, right? professor. That's so, great. so real quick, this is actually her history. Here. And all these lies have promoted her to get where she's at today. There, she's on, the, the on the faculty. She's head of the Native yeah. Studies so program, correct? This is the history of of, of uh, Cindy Cindy Alvitre. Cindy Alvitre uh, teaches English at the English department at Cal State uh, Long Beach, uh, claiming to be Native when she's actually from down south. And this is the proof of her not being Gabrielle, right. correct? Right. And I don't know what she has proving that she is, or that she's Tongva. Let's let's talk about Tongva. Yeah. What's a Tongva? How did how did Tongva come around? Because you have to understand that. Everybody in, in, in Los Angeles, in Southern California, mm -hmm. knows who knows that this is Tongva land. This is Tongva land. Every kid, every college student knows this. So where did Tongva, who's, where did Tongva come from? How did she pull it? How did she you get know, The way she pulled it off, uh, Cindy Alitri herself, is to get into the minds of these children and, and politicians or what have you, and tell them, please don't use that term Gabrielle no more. That's our slave name. We don't like that. We, she used the word we. Like as if she had a mouse in her pocket, but she used the term "we" when she wasn't a descendant yeah. of the original people. But she used that tactic to remove the Gabrielino name, which is our slave name. But all our—if you listen sure, to all sure, the tribes sure. there—we all use our uh, historic name. That we—that's where you could go back sure. into our history. So she would tell people, "Please don't use that name. That's our slave name. We want you to call us Tongva." So to promote the name Tongva, you erase again. Where did she come up with Tongva? Where did, where did she get Tongva? She, she, these individuals had an agenda. The, the term Tongva was documented in 1903 by Miriam C. Hart, who is the very man that established the Webster Dictionary. Yeah, Miriam Webster, the Mer partner Miriam of Webster. Noah Webster. Right. And he was hired by the family Berkeley to study the Indians of Southern California. And they, he was paid. He was a biologist. He didn't want to do native yeah, yeah. history, but because they were paying him, he carried on the mission on for the family to study the local tribes of Southern California. And his tribe was us, the Gabrielino. He interviewed a woman in 1903 up in Fort Pejon at the reservation sure. when wanting to know the history of the tribe. It, you know, we came to the San Gabriel area. Like I mentioned earlier, our families are very private. 1903, remember, we sure. were citizens in 1924. Nobody wanted to talk to a white no, man because that. of our Writing what we went down. through. Right. right. And what we, we didn't want to say we were natives. You know, people would say, oh, they don't want to say natives. Everybody's got that sure. concept, but they have to truly understand why sure. we didn't want to say because of our past. Yeah, we had, oh, so you got to remember, we're, genocide. We're, 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 we're not citizens. We had no rights. We had no sure, rights. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. According and to the government, the first people. Say? Like, so, so in 1903, you know, the women, she was asked, you know where she was from where was she born she said i was born in san gabriel my mother's from san gabriel and my father is from the serrano which are san manuel people okay she said san gabriel she didn't say anything else and but she said of the village that was formerly known as tovascana but because seahart Merriam in his documents will tell you because he could not pronounce the word tovascana he abbreviated down bay down bay. so Fast forward, he died in, in 1945, I believe, from the 45. All these notes were never published until 1965. Students at Berkeley found his notes and published them without verifying if they were fact. And in his notes, he mentions, and even Hugo Reed's notes mentioned that his notes were inadequate, not good, because he wrote the villages the way they pronounce them. You get an Anglo man, sure. you know, you tell him yeah, yeah. about, you know, say say a Spanish name or a Mexican sure, name or Indian, that. they're not going to pronounce it right. You know, it, it, it's hard. So. They published those notes. So Sidney and all these people had a mission. And their mission is what exactly they're doing today. Archaeology, being uh, faculty, you know, working right. at the schools and what have you. It, it, they talk about it. And to get them there, they needed to be somebody. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. what they wanted to be was this tribe that they weren't affiliated with or associated or even descendants of. So Miriam wrote Tongva down. So he wrote Tongva. Tomba. And she and, read the And, and she read, read it this. and she came the document that I showed you, the letter yeah. that I showed you. She came during the time we were saving the springs over in Santa Monica and she tried to tell right. us that we should use that name since oh, we got our state. Oh really? Our, yeah. 
our since we got our state recognition, since we got our first 501c3, utilize this name because this is what's going to help you move forward for your next step of recognition. Because we were very close, federal recognition. So she said, you need to use this name. Everybody stepped back and said, no, we don't want to use that name. But because the elders were not academia smart, she pushed that name through her academia. Wow. Okay. And she established the name of the springs there, but when the tribe, the people who saved it, the Indians, wanted to name it the name of the community there, which was Guravanga, the, the, the area, what, right. 